And now chapter 14, The Disappearance of Lord Krishna. Sri Sutta Goswami said, Arjun went to Dwarka to see Lord Sri Krishna and other friends, and also to learn from the Lord of his next activities. A few months passed, and Arjun did not return. Maharaj Yudhisthira then began to observe some inauspicious omens, which were fearful in themselves. He saw that the direction of eternal time had changed, and this was very fearful. There were disruptions in the seasonal regularities. The people in general had become very greedy, angry, and deceitful. And he saw that they were adopting foul means of livelihood. All ordinary transactions and dealings became polluted with cheating, even between friends. And in familial affairs, there was always misunderstanding between fathers, mothers, and sons, between well-wishers and between brothers. Even between husband and wife, there was always strain and quarrel. In course of time, it came to pass that people in general became accustomed to greed, anger, pride, etc., Maharaj Yudhisthira, observing all these omens, spoke to his younger brother. Maharaj Yudhisthira said to his younger brother, Bhima Sain, I sent Arjun to Dwarka to meet his friends and to learn from the personality of Godhead, Krishna, of his program of work. Since he departed, seven months have passed, yet he has not returned. I do not know factually how things are going there. Is he going to quit his earthly pastimes, as Devarshi nodded indicated? Has that time already arrived? From him only all our kingly opulence, good wives, lives, progeny, control over our subjects, victory over our enemies, and future accommodations in higher planets have become possible. All this is due to his causeless mercy upon us. Just see, O oh man with the tiger strength, how many miseries due to celestial influences, earthly reactions, and bodily pains, all very dangerous in themselves, are foreboding danger in the near future by deluding our intelligence. The left side of my body my thighs, arms and eyes are all quivering again and again. I am having heart palpitations due to fear. All this indicates undesirable happenings. Just see, O Bhima, how the she-jackal cries at the rising sun and vomits fire, and, and how the dog barks at me fearlessly. O Bhima Sena, tiger amongst men, now, useful animals like cows are passing me on the left side, and lower animals like the asses are circumambulating me. My horses appear to weep upon seeing me. Just see, this pigeon is, is like a messenger of death. The shrieks of the owls and their rival crows make my heart tremble. It appears that they want to make a void of the whole universe. Just see how the smoke encircles the sky. It appears that the earth and mountains are, are throbbing. Just hear the cloudless thunder and see the bolts from the blue. The wind blows violently, blasting dust everywhere and creating darkness. Clouds are raining everywhere with bloody disasters. The rays of the sun are declining. 
and the stars appear to be fighting amongst themselves. Confused living entities appear to be ablaze and weeping. Rivers, tributaries, ponds, reservoirs, and the mind are all perturbed. Butter no longer ignites fire. What is this extraordinary time? What is going to happen? The calves do not suck the teats of the cows, nor do the cows give milk. They are standing, crying, tears in their eyes, and the bulls take no pleasure in the pasturing grounds. The deities seem to be crying in the temple, lamenting and perspiring. They, they seem about to leave. All the cities, villages, towns, gardens, mines, and hermitages are now devoid of beauty and bereft of all happiness. I do not know what sort of calamities are now awaiting us. I think that all these earthly disturbances indicate some greater loss to the good fortune of the world. The world was fortunate to have been marked with the footprints of the lotus feet of the Lord. These signs indicate that this will no longer be. O Brahmin Shonaka, while Maharaj Yudhishthir, observing the inauspicious signs on the earth at that time, was thus thinking to himself, Arjun came back from the city of the Yadus, or Dwarka. When he bowed at his feet, the king saw that his dejection was unprecedented. His head was down, and tears glided from his lotus eyes. Seeing Arjun pale due to heartfelt anxieties, the king, remembering the indications of the sage nodded, questioned him in the midst of friends. Maharaj Yudhishthir said, My dear brother, please tell me whether our friends and relatives, such as Madhu, Boja, Dashara, Adha, Sattvata, Andika, and the members of the Yadu family are all passing their days in, in happiness. Is my respectable grandfather, Shura Sena, in a happy mood? And are my maternal uncle, Vasudev, and his younger brothers all doing well? His seven wives, headed by Devaki, are all sisters. Are they and their sons and daughters-in-law all happy? Are Ugra Sena, whose son was the mischievous Kamsa, and his younger brother still living? Are Adika and his son Kritavarma happy? Are Akrura, Jayanta, Gada, Sharana, and Shatrujit all happy? And how is Balaram, the personality of Godhead and the protector of devotees? How is Pradyumna, the great general of the Vrishni family? I, is he happy? And is Aniruddha, the plenary expansion of the personality of Godhead, faring well? Are all the chieftain sons of Lord Krishna, such as Sushena, Charudeshna, Samba, the son of Jambavati, and Rishaba, along with their sons, all doing well? Also Shrutadev, Uddhava and others, Nanda, Sunanda and other leaders of liberated souls who are constant companions of the Lord are protected by Lord Balaram and Krishna. Are they all doing well in their respective functions? Do they who are all eternally bound in friendship with us remember our welfare? Is Lord Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who gives pleasure to the cows, the senses, and the Brahmins, who is very affectionate towards his devotees, enjoying the pious assembly at Dvarkapuri, surrounded by friends. The original Personality of Godhead, the enjoyer, 
and Balaram, the primeval lord Ananta, are staying in the ocean of the Yadu dynasty for the welfare, protection and general progress of the entire universe. And the members of the Yadu dynasty, being protected by the arms of the Lord, are enjoying life like the residents of the spiritual sky. Simply by administering comforts at the lotus feet of the Lord, which is the most important of all services, the queens at Dwarka, headed by Satyabhama, induced the Lord to conquer the demigods. Thus the queens enjoy things which are prerogatives of the wives of the controller of thunderbolts, Indra. The great heroes of the Yadu dynasty, being protected by the arms of Lord Sri Krishna, always remain fearless in every respect, and therefore their feet trample over the Sudharma assembly house, which the best demigods deserved, but which was taken away from them. My brother Arjun, Please tell me whether your health is all right. You, you appear to have lost your bodily luster. Is this due to others disrespecting and neglecting you because of your long stay at Dwarka? Has someone addressed you with unfriendly words or, or threatened you? Could you not give charity to one who asked? Or could you not keep your promise to someone? You are always the protector of the deserving living beings, such as Brahmins, children, cows, women, and the diseased. Could you not give them protection when they approached you for shelter? Have you contacted a woman of impeachable character? Or have you not properly treated a deserving woman? Or have you been defeated on the way by, by someone who is inferior or equal to you? Have you not taken care of old men and boys who deserve to dine with you? Have you left them and taken your meals alone? Have you committed some unpardonable mistake which is considered to be abominable? Or, or is it that you are feeling empty for all time because you might have lost your most intimate friend, Lord Krishna? Oh, my brother Arjun, I can think of no other reason for your becoming so dejected. Thus ends the fourteenth chapter of the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Disappearance of Lord Krishna.